three, four, five. church here and the churches everywhere where many gather together in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to just give ourselves today, Father. Amen. Have your way in this service. Lift us above the shadows, O oh God, that we might sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Bless the sick and the plague. Touch lives. Bring people together. Tear down walls that divide men, O oh God, and bring us together in a special way. We thank you for our Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Take your shoes off. Get your mind upon the Lord. And the shower. Let's have a good time. Need the top of Jesus. Need
good and greatly to be praised. I thank him for his love and his mercy. I thank you for his ability to touch and change lives. Therefore, there is nothing impossible with God if right. you can just believe. All right. If you can just believe, there is nothing impossible with God. You know, if we could just get that in our soul, if we could just get that deep within our hearts, if we truly had an understanding of what that really means, there is nothing impossible with God. Amen. We see things through our fleshly eyes. We feel with the natural heart. And sometimes we just cut God short. Because we think it's impossible for us, how can God accomplish it? But believe me, He doesn't need you and I to accomplish things. God can do anything God wants to do. Amen. And He's well able to do Amen. anything. Amen. Yes, He is. And I just thank you today, and I praise Him so much for His mercy and His grace. If you could just lift your hands this morning and give Him honor. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, I come before you, and I thank you, and I praise you, Lord. I ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you would anoint and bless the word as it goes forth. Bless the word, Lord Jesus, that it might edify us, that open our ears that we can hear this word. Write this word upon the tables of our heart. Make a change within us, Lord Jesus. Truly, Lord God, I thank you and I praise you today. I thank you, Lord, because I know that all power in heaven and earth is in that name. In the name of Jesus, all power. All power is in that name of Jesus. For there is nothing impossible with you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, and I praise you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. I praise and thank you, Lord, for I know that you are well able to supply the needs of your children, whatsoever they would be. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I just thank you so much today because he is just a wonderful prayer answering God. Um, I had a really bad day yesterday morning. I got up and I was just having a, a bad day. It was physically, emotionally, I was a mess. And I sat on the couch and cried like a baby. I just cried like a baby. And my husband came over and he just prayed for me. And, you know, he just laid his hands. He said, I'm going to pray for you. And then he said, won't you just go to bed? Just, and I said, no, I'm not going to bed. And so he just prayed for me. And, and, and you know what? God just touched my body. He just touched my body and he touched my mind. And he made me able to get up and to go and do the things that I had to do. I'm just glad that I know a prayer answering God. You know, he's, he's not a God that's on a far journey. He's not like your doctor when you call. They say, if this is an emergency, please hang up and call. <laughs> if it was an emergency, I wouldn't be calling the doctor. I'd call them. <laughs> but you call your doctor and it says, if this is an emergency, please hang up and dial 911. <laughs> Every doctor says that. And I'm like, okay. I was calling the doctor and told the doctor. God is not like that. It's not like when you get down on your knees, he said, Excuse me, I'm over here taking care of the past situation right now. You're just going to have to wait. <laughs> no. He's omnipresent. He is infinite. He is everywhere all the time. For everyone. And see, can you fathom that in your mind? I can't. It's hard for me. I'm being honest. It's hard for me to fathom in my mind being everywhere all the time for everyone. And I know I said this a lot, I refer back to that, that, that one little scene in Bruce Almighty where he's got all these prayers coming his way because in Bruce Almighty he's God for a little while. Because all these prayers coming his way, I mean, he's just, what do I do? And he has all these, I'll follow them all up and I'll do this and I'll do that. He goes to all these, and then he says in the computer, oh, I'm on the computer. And then he just says, yes, 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 well, absolute complete chaos ensues because sometimes God has to say, no, 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 yes, no, yes, no, wait a little bit, wait on this one, the answer is yes, but just not right now, but it's never yes, 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 never, because when it's yes, 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 face it, we think we think we know what's best for our lives. Yeah. And every 
14 year old kid knows what's best for their life. <laughs> I can say that because I have granddaughters and grandsons. <laughs> and I went through seven kids. <laughs> Trust me. I used to say that at the age of 11, children start going brain dead. By the time they're 15, they're totally brain dead. And somewhere around 18, they get their conscious back. It's like, wow. <laughs> It is amazing what those years, it has to be the most difficult, 11 to 18 have to be the most difficult years there is of anybody's life, I'm telling you. Because they're not quite kids and they're not quite adults. Well, we're that way sometimes in God, spiritually. We're not quite grown up, because we haven't come to the fullness of the understanding, yet we're not quite children. I'm not drinking milk, but I'm not able to eat all the meat. <laughs> We're that way sometimes in God. We're fighting this flesh all the time. Yeah. We're constantly fighting this flesh all the time. And if we could just come to the understanding, and, and I know that the Bible says that we see through a glass darkly, that means that we can just kind of figure things out right now. But one of these days, one of these days when, when we, we come into His presence, when we come into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we come into His presence, Everything, all knowledge Hallelujah. and all understanding Amen. is going to be opened up to us. Right now, it's hard to fathom someone being everywhere all the time for everyone and having the perfect answer for each and every one of us. Because face it, we think we know what we need. I need that new car. That's what I need. If I just had that new car, I'd never have a problem. I just need that brand new car. And then you find out as soon as you buy it, it's got a recall on it. <laughs> the brake system is bad. Multiple wrecks have been called, because, but I had to have, I knew that's the car I had to have. And then you find out that car wasn't what I thought it was. <coughs> that car wasn't what I thought it was. I thought it would make my life easy. I've missed more days of work having that new car than I did that old piece of junk that I drove around. Because see, sometimes we see things through our physical eyes that, that God says, no. So if you're trying to do something and it continues things to fall apart, stop and think. Is this what God wants for me? Is this where he wants me to go? Is this in the will of God or is this what I want? Because sometimes, sometimes what we want is not in the will of God. What we want is not what is best for us. Now, if you made a choice and you made a decision and you followed that way, and you say, okay, God, I'm going to do this. Well, if you're bound by it, well, then I guess you got to make the best of a bad situation. Because one thing I know, there isn't anything that you can't do that God can't turn it around for you. Because the Word of God says that what the enemy meant for evil against us, God will turn it around for our good. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that absolutely wonderful? Even when you mess up big time, even when you fall flat on your face, even when you've got your life in such a crazy mess, and you've done it to you, and the thing is, when you know you've done it to yourself, that's the thing. It's not like you can reach out and go, it's all Sister Valerie's fault, she did it, it's all her fault. No, it's when you look in the mirror and you go, okay, you did this. <laughs> you did this. You're the one that made this choice. You're the one that made this decision. You have to live with it. Now, what are we going to do? <laughs> I can say that because I can tell you that's one of the best people on the face of this earth. She is. I'm, I'm not going to get her in trouble. But I'm just saying, the Bible says give honor where honor is due. And she is one of the most trusting people that you can, I'm just telling you, she is a sweetheart of a person. She just is. And, She's a peacemaker. That she absolutely, 100% is a peacemaker. She does not like controversy. <laughs> she will go out of her way to get away from controversy. I was that way at one time. I, don't <laughs> I was that way. <laughs> I, again, you look in the mirror and you say, why are you in this situation? Because you've done this. You've done it. And the great thing is, is that you can go to God and you can say, Lord, I made a mistake. Lord, I went left when you said right. 
I didn't do what you told me to do. Now, how do we fix this? Show me how to fix this situation. Because there are things that I have said to people, my children especially, because face it, as parents, we say things to our children, not stopping and thinking about the results. But I said things to my children and hurt them and they walked away. And I knew afterwards I said it thinking I was doing good for them, but actually I just went in my own way. And so then you have to find it in yourself to go to them and say, I'm sorry I said that. I, I, that wasn't, I shouldn't have done those things. And you know what, being a parent, it's okay to say you're sorry. It's okay to say you're wrong. Yes, because if you're, if you're not capable of telling your children, I was wrong, I shouldn't have done that, then how are they, you know, they have to know that you're human too. It cannot always be our way. It can't be always be our way as a wife. It cannot always be our way as a husband. It cannot always be that way as a parent. And it definitely cannot always be our way as a child of God. Amen. Sometimes as a child of God, you just have to walk away. Yes. You just do. You just have to say, okay, Lord, I want what I want your will to be done in my life. And and he just he just has been talking to me about the one the one scripture in here that says, where your heart is, your treasure is also. Because when I first came to God, when I first came to him and I gave my life over to him, my total heart's desire was to know all about him, to be in his presence. That was my heart's desire, to know about God and to know what his will was in my life and, and how I could further the gospel. And as time goes on and life goes on, we get encumbered with the things of this world. The, the things in life kind of get you down. You have a job to do. You have a house to clean. You have bills to pay. You have family. You have you know, responsibilities to the community. You have responsibilities to your friends. And pretty soon, you have just timed yourself right out of God. I don't have enough time to do the things that I know I'm supposed to do. Sure you do. Brother Mark taught the best message several years back. I will never forget it. You know how you have those certain messages that just get in your heart? And you just can't... Brother Ronnie, the, the, let the children grow. You know, different, different ones. Um, Brother Ricky, God has one more move. Mm -hmm. Sister Daisy's movie, of, uh, her, Sister Daisy's uh, message of counterfeit. And the rock shall not cry out of my place. And God, when she put all those little rocks down. There are certain messages that get in your head that you just can't forget. You know, you just don't forget. Brother Mark said, you know, I, I just didn't have time to do anything. Didn't have time to get things done. Just didn't have time for everything. And he said, I stopped and I examined my life. And I found out there was plenty of time to do those things if I put them in the right order. There's plenty of time to do those things when you put them in the right order. It's just how you put them in order. Do you put them? I've been getting a whipping ever since that. <laughs> You got that. I, I'm not whipping you, Mark. You're whipping me. <laughs> you know, because if you put God, if you put God here, and everything else where it's supposed Amen. to be, your life will run smoothly. But when you put your job here, and your family here, and, and 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 your home duties here, and and then you put God here. Guess what? You're going to have a tough time on your job. Your family's going to be in conflict. And the weeds are going to grow everywhere in your yard. <laughs> Trust me. I know this. I know this. I told my husband, I've got to get that flower garden. He said, it's out there. i got to get that flower garden fixed. He said, it's out there. He's not a good help, me. <laughs> he tells me like it is. He does not mighty call me in any way, shape, or form. But I say, I really need to do this. Then do it. Then just do it. No problem. Okay. Do it. I want him to say, it's okay, honey. No, no. That's what I want him to do. I want him to put his arm around me and say, it's all right, honey. It's okay. He is not that way. He said, just do it. Just do it. He is a good husband. He's a very good husband. Oh. He is. He's a good husband. He's a good father. And he's a wonderful grandfather. I will take. Is he human? Oh, yes, he's human. <laughs> he's human. 
He's human, but he is a good man, and he works hard. He, he, I, you know, give honor where honor is due, and I truly, I honestly believe that. But if you don't line things up properly, they'll never run properly. Try putting diesel in a gas engine. It will not run properly. Try replacing your oil with water and see how far your car gets down the road. It'll lock up real quick. Does, doesn't work that way. There's lots of things you cannot interchange because it just doesn't work. Try putting a 15-inch tire on a 16-inch wheel. Will not work. You'll never get it on there. And vice versa. It will not work. You have to put things in the proper order. If you don't, then it's not going to work. God has to be here. Because when God is here, everything else will line up in its proper place. Where your heart is, is where your treasure is. If your heart is into God, people will know you have a heart into God because they'll see your life and they'll read it and they'll know. They'll know it by your speech. They'll know it by your actions. Face it, Peter could not hide. Peter could not hide. And the woman said, your speech, your speech, your speech betrays you. I know just by the sound of your voice, you are one of them. You are one of them. Don't you want people to look at you and say, you are one of them. I know by your actions and I know by your words that you are one of those people called Christians. I want them to look at me and say, you are Christian. And I want it to be a blessing to God. I don't want it to be, oh yeah, you're one of them Christians, aren't you? <laughs> You see, it's all in how they see you. You can be, you're one of those, aren't you? You're one of those Christians. You're one of those people that follow Christ, that have love and compassion and mercy. Or you can be one of those Christians, those hypocrites that say one thing and do another. Oh, I don't ever want that to be said of me. I don't ever want anybody to look at me and say, I thought you were a Christian. I want my words and my deeds and everything that I do, I want the walk that I walk, for people to look at me and say, there's something about them that makes a difference. <coughs> and we can read now. <laughs> we'll start at verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything you have need of, God will provide if you have faith. You just have to have faith. And it's not an easy one. You know, I've heard Brother Pat say many, many times, he will settle you and he will establish you and he will set you on a rock. But you, there are some things that you have to go through to get to that place. You, there are things that we have to endure. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants you to have the kingdom. Now, what is the kingdom? Peace, joy, and righteousness all in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to walk in a righteous walk. He wants you to have that kingdom, the whole thing. Not just part of it, but all of it. He wants you to have all of it. Yeah. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that fails not. Where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupt. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If your heart is in the world, if your heart is in materialistic things, if your heart is in how high you can get on your job ladder, if your if your heart is in the things of the world, you can't have the fullness of the kingdom. But if your heart is in God and, and all that He has for you, you have what God needs you to have. You climb that ladder, it's inevitable. If you follow after God with your whole heart, you'll climb that ladder wherever He wants you to be. It might be the top rung, it may be the middle, and it may be the bottom rung. But wherever it is, it's where God wants you to be. He may have want you to have that mansion on a hilltop. But I guarantee you, with that mansion comes many rooms to clean. With that mansion comes a big price tag that you pay every month. With that mansion comes a big electric bill that comes every month. So don't think because you get that mansion on the hill that you're not going to have to do more to get it. 
What is it? Be ye content in whatsoever way you find yourself. Paul said, I've been up and I've been down, and I've been finding myself happy wherever I'm at. Amen. Have peace no matter where you're at. Absolutely. If you're on top, find peace. If you're on bottom, find peace. If you're in the middle row, find peace. Absolutely. Find peace in God and all these things you have need of, you're going to have. It's His Word. You've got to read the Word. Yeah. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. You've got to keep yourself in the this day. I'm telling you, the day that we live in, you have to keep yourself. Because there are so many, many different thoughts out there. This church has this thought, and that church has this thought, and this evangelist has this thought, and this evangelist has that thought. Well, all those thoughts are good so long as they line up with the Word of God. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. Because if the blind follow the blind, then they all fall in the ditch. You've got to know the Word of God for yourself. You can't do it because Brother Pat's telling you. You can't do it because Sister Lisa tells you. You can't do it because I tell you. You can't do it because Brother Raymond stands up and he testifies and he tells you. You have to know the Word of God for yourself. You have to know God for yourself. We live in a very deceptive world today. And they tell you what is up is down, and what is down is up, and what is black is white, and what is white is black. And what is right is wrong, and what is wrong is right. You have to know God for yourself. Amen. Deep within you. How can you have a heart after God if you don't even know God? Right. You all, everybody here thinks they know me. Everybody here thinks they know me. You know of me. But you don't know me. My husband can tell you a whole lot about me that I wouldn't want you to know. Because you don't live in my household. You don't know that whenever the toilet seat is up and somebody misses the toilet seat, it infuriates me. It infuri I, I do daycare. It's not my husband. It's not my husband. It's not my husband. I do daycare and I have little boys. Mm. Little things like that. Just make me. I just can't believe I just cleaned this bathroom. I'm a, a unit. You think you know me. I can tell you this about me. I love people. I try my very best not to be judgmental. I try to ensue grace to all people. I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. But I'm still human. And I found out the other day that something that I thought was going on and made a judgment about it wasn't what was happening at all. I thought, well, they must have did this, or they must have done, look, look what they're doing, I mean, you know. And then I found out what was happening wasn't what I thought. And then I thought, guilt, Lord. Yeah. Here I'm thinking they're rolling the dough and they're just having everything done and they're just, oh, everything's great for them. And I find out that he almost died. She was in the hospital. And they was having work done because they had no choice. Cleats in the back, stabbed in the heart. I'm feeling guilty, and because things are not always as you see them. You see things and you make judgments, and then that's when you say, "I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I I should never have even had those thoughts." I say these things to you because I'm human, just like you are. So when you fall or you fail or you make judgments and things don't like you, think, don't get beat up and say, I can't serve God. I guess I've just, I've blown it. Uh, no, that's when you turn to him and you say, forgive me, God. I just, I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm human and I make mistakes. Please forgive me. Each and every one of us make mistakes. And that's why he says, next time, don't be so quick to judge that situation. Next class, don't be so quick to judge any situation. Things aren't always as you see them, nor are things always as you see my life. That's why I said, you think you know me. Many of you know the Sister Jennifer that comes into the church and you know none of the else about me. A lot of that's because I want it that way. Because when I'm up here and I'm teaching, or if I'm laying hands on someone and I'm praying for them, I really don't want to know anything about your personal Amen. life. Because if I know all about your personal life, guess what happens? 
this fleshly person gets involved. I don't want the flesh to be involved. Now, if I see you on the street, I'm going to talk to you. If you invited me to your house, I would come and sit and eat dinner with you. But I, as Brother Pat says, <coughs> familiarity breeds contempt. And you have to be very careful because I have seen many, many people in this church that become so chummy and they're very best friends. And the next thing you know, they're both leaving the church because they can't stand each other. And for some reason, the church gets blamed. I've seen multiple people in and out of this church because personal conflict got in their way. You have to be careful that you don't allow those things to come in and destroy your spiritual walk with God in this church. Do you understand that? It's so true. I'm just telling you. But we're all flesh and we all fail. We all make mistakes. The great and wonderful thing is that we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you go to him and you say, Lord, I've made a mistake. Help me. Lift me up. Help me to go on and do better. Help me to do better, Lord. Give me my heart's desire would be to serve you and to do your will that I might walk, that I might have the fullness of the kingdom of God. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, may a, they may open unto him immediately, waiting for him, ready for him. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to me, and will come forth and serve them. And if he come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find him so, blessed are those servants. You need to be looking, watching for him every day, every hour of the day. He's coming when it, at a time when you think not. Trust me. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find him so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour that ye think not. God wants his children to be ready, watching, waiting for his return. So many people say, well, I've heard that my whole life. I've heard my whole life, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's not came back yet. I've heard my whole life, Jesus is coming back. Well, he's not come back. Well, he's coming back. He's coming back. And it says, you won't know the hour, you won't know the day, but you will know the season. We live in a wretched world. I'm telling you, we live in a wretched world that is anti-Christ if there ever was a time. We live in a world that is anti-Christ. And that's the reason he says, gird yourself. You have to be wrapped in the Word of God all the time. You have to know the Word of God for yourself. You have to know God. You have to have a personal relationship. This is not about a religious experience. Because if all you have with God is a religious experience, you don't have what He wants you to have. He wants you to have a personal relationship with Him that you know him. That's why I said, you think you know me, but you really don't know me unless you live with me. When you live with me, you know all about me. You know the things that make me happy, the things that make me sad. And if you know God, then you know his will. You know where he wants you to walk and where he doesn't want you to walk. He knows you, he knows what you what he wants you to say, and when he wants you to keep your mouth shut. Sometimes God will say, don't go there. Don't go there. I said, don't go there. And we go there. <laughs> we go there because our flesh just drags us right in there. He said, don't open your mouth. You went, but don't open your mouth. I said, don't open your mouth. What do we do? We open our mouth. Don't say that. Don't say that. You'll be sorry. Don't you say that. And I said, Then what does he do? He fixes it. Okay, you've already done it, so now we're going to fix it. Let's see. Now, repercussions. 
if I stick my hand in a chainsaw, what's going to happen? I'm going to lose my hand. Now, I'm going to go the rest of my life without a hand. Now, can I still live? Of course I can still live. But I don't have the function of my hand anymore. Do you understand that? I don't have the function. There are some things we're going to have to live with repercussions. Now, not that God can't fix it, because God's made a way to make it work. He's made a way to make it work. But he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He wants you to be full body. He says, the toe says, I'm not of any importance. The toe says, but I'm not, I'm not like the hand. I'm not like the head. I'm not like the arm. Oh, you cut that toe off and see what happens. You cut that toe off and find out what happens. Makes a big difference. Makes a big difference in the way you walk. Every part of you is important. That's why it's important that you know God and that you walk in the way that He would have you to walk. Amen. It's why it's important to know the Word of God when somebody comes to you and says, well, the Bible says this. It says that a woman is not supposed to cut her hair. And what are you going to say about that? What are you going to say about that? Don't cut it. Okay. If the Bible tells you not to cut your hair, by all means, don't cut your hair. But it doesn't tell me that. It doesn't tell me that. Well, I can show you the scripture right here where it says a woman's long hair is her glory. Okay. First of all, that's not, I'm, I'm not under the law anymore. I'm, I'm out of that law. I'm not in that law dispensation anymore. And furthermore, he says, that not that the Bible says this, is the, but he, Paul says, this is how I feel. This was Paul's opinion. Do you understand? If you don't know the Word of God, you can be deceived. Amen. Do you understand? You can be deceived. Because there are people that will take the Word of God and turn it around for what they want it to say. You have to know the Word for yourself. If you don't know the Word, you will be deceived. And you, that's where that personal relationship comes from God. Because where it may not be alright for them to cut their hair, God does not bother, doesn't bother me one bit to cut my hair. I have a personal relationship with God. And you know what he says? It's hair. I would love you if you were bald. I would love you if you were bald. Do you think if all my hair fell out, God would stop loving me? But the Bible says a woman's long hair is her glory. Surely if I have no hair, then God can't love me. You can use the word of God to your own wants. <coughs> Many people do. They are called wolves in sheep clothing. Somebody here today, right now, has a hundred dollar bill in your pocket. God just told me you have a hundred dollar bill in your pocket. And you were trying to debate what to do with that hundred dollar. The word of God says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down. God told me you have a hundred dollar bill in your pocket. If you give that hundred dollars, he will bless you. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. And you can use it for your own wants and your own needs if you choose to. You can use it to get anything you want. Brother Pat has said a hundred times. He can put flashing lights. What is that? Neon lights. Yeah, but what, 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 what's it? Okay. I can never say that. Perfect Pastor Pat prophesying preach. <laughs> I can't speak it. Perfect. And you know what? You know how many people would come? People would come to see the Brother Pat show. Because people like to jump in and shout. Even if they don't understand. There was a post from the church one time. I heard this from somebody. Things. They want to do things. Oh, 
We don't serve God by feeling. We don't serve God by how we feel. We don't serve God because we jump in and shout all the time. If you only serve God when you're jumping and shouting, what's going to happen when the jump and shout goes away? You serve God because you have a heart toward Him. Where your heart is, there's where your treasure is. Is your heart to God? Is your heart to do the will of God? Where is your heart today? Search. Just for the next 30 seconds, I want you to stop and think what the most important thing in your life is today. And be honest with yourself. What is the most important thing in your life today? Most of us caught off guard. God would not be our first word. Most of us, I'm being honest, most of us, if somebody walked up to you nonchalantly out of the middle of nowhere and said, what is the most important thing in your life today? Most of us would say, my family. I'm being honest. Most of you would say, my family. Because you wouldn't think to say God first. Because the, and to me, that's just a given. It's a given that God is the most important thing. But many of us, would, lots of different answers would come into our head. My family, my home, my job. But what has to be the most important thing in our lives is God. The work of God. The will of God. Because we, you know, everybody's always looking for the purpose of life. What is the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the peace of life, the meaning of life, the reason for life. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. I, know what the, I know what the reason of life is. Well, to be a witness unto God. <laughs> what is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is to witness about God. Right. You want to know what your purpose here on this world is? What is your purpose in life? To serve God, to be a witness, to testify about God. That's your purpose in life. That all might know who Jesus Christ is. Amen. I just solved everybody's problem. <laughs> Give it to you. <laughs> Purpose of life. Witness to God. Amen. <laughs> you know, just this morning, and, and we'll kind of go along with what you're teaching about there. Just this morning, it's going to be amazing to find out how this, how they handled this situation. But just this morning, the comment was, is it about time we bring <coughs> Christ back into the school? Over some situations that are happening with, the, I mean, they, some teenagers going to just for no reason whatsoever killed a, a, vet, a World War II veteran. Last week it was last week it was a uh, uh, some kind of a ball player that they uh, some teen, some young kid blow the face off of a little baby because he, uh, he not you know if the mother wouldn't hand over some money. To now, just this morning, the, the question was, is it about time we take and bring Jesus Christ back into our schools and things? Now, it's a very good question, but even a lot of uh, Christians are going to take this and they're going to just come. But this is an opportunity for the Christians to, 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 to turn this around, but they're going to blow it because they're going to blame they're going to start throwing blame instead of using it to our advantage. They're going to get on Facebook and say, well, who was the idiot? You know, whoever said that Christ was taken out? They're going to blow it up in such a big, big to-do when they could use it to their advantage and and, and really make it work for them. And, and uh, uh, it, it was just interesting to know that, that, that like you say, that the Christians who are heard and, and know the word, they can take that one little thing that's been, that's been that's on the news this morning and they can turn that into a lot of good. Uh, one simple answer can make a big difference yeah. at how you answer that question. Exactly. And because there are multiple answers to that, Christ was never taken out of the school. Right. He's there everywhere. You take When you go into the school, you take him with you. Now, there are now the teachers can't teach it like these. There are some that still do, regardless. We 
by the grace of God, we have weekday religious education and still here in this county. They, they take our children and they go to the, to the, to the church and, and they're taught about Christ. We still have that blessing here in this county. Now, there, there are still some people fighting. I know Mooresville had a big fight over it. But we here in Martinsville, still, we still have that. We still have that ability. And, and there is no easy answer. There is no easy answer to that question that you said. Because when you say, we want to bring Christ back in, then you have, are we bringing Christ back in or are we bringing religion in? There's, there's difference. Are you bringing Christ back in or are you bringing religion in? Because if you're going to bring religion in, then you're going to bring all religions in. And they already teach that because when Brittany was in, in school, they, they taught about all the different types of, of religions. And she had to study each one, whether it was uh, uh, Dalai Lama, whether it was Islam, whether it was Christianity, whether it was Judaism. They, they had several different ones that they had to go through. What? And, and it's all in how you see each and every religion. Because some people say Islam is bad. Not all Islam people are bad. They don't believe in Jesus Christ as your savior, they're bad. I mean, I mean, I'm saying they're not bad people in far as terrorists. That's what I mean. Not all Islam are terrorists. Not, yet, not all Islam people are terrorists. The same way, not all Christians are KKK. When you, when you group Christianity with KKK and skinheads and all of those, that's not Christianity. So when you're talking about bringing religion into the school, that's going to be difficult because you're going to have multiple religions in the school. Amen. Amen. So that you don't ever take Christ out of school. He's wherever you take him. If you teach your children, train your child up in the way they should go, you teach your children. When Lisa, Brother Pat said, when you go to school, you just take him with you. Nobody, when you go to school, you take him with you. Nobody can keep you from praying. Amen. Right. When, you go, when you went to school, did you take, did you take God with you? Because they can't take God. Just when you go through the door, it's not like you take God off and put him down. I'm going to go through the school door, so here, here, Jesus is over here, and I'm going through the door. No, when you go in, you take him with you. When you go into Walmart, do you take Jesus off when you go into Walmart? No, everywhere you go, you take him with you. And that's the key, wherever you go. When you go into a restaurant, you go to Walmart, you go to Kmart, you get on Facebook. Wherever you go, you take him with you. Because people are reading you. And I'm telling you, as a Christian, Brother Mike Ballot said this week, you know, I have a Facebook account. And anybody here could read my Facebook account at any time of the day, any hour of the day. I'd have no problem with it. Already have. And you will not find any negativity in anything that I say. What I say is, God is good. He has blessed me. Uh, I show a lot of things that I do with my grandkids and my children, you know, those types of things. Uh, I, I, I give God honor and glory for everything that he does because that's what we have a voice. And Facebook can be a good place. It's a good sounding place for God. But if you call yourself Christian and you get on there and every other word out of your line is a cuss word and you're being, I have to be honest. I have held my head down and been ashamed of a few people in this building for the things that they said. And I just shook my head and said, God, help them to see what they have done and what they're doing. And not say any judgments, but you know when you're angry, you say things. But you got to be careful you don't put it in writing. Things that go in your mind are one thing, but when you put it on Facebook, it's there. And that person shares it, which shares it, and shares it, and shares it, and shares it, and guess what? Ten years from now, it's going to still be out there. Be careful what you say. Gird yourself in this world. Gird yourself. Put a lock on your mouth. Say, Holy Ghost, lead me and guide me. Let me speak words that would edify Christ. Amen. Guide me, Lord. Keep my this little teeny tiny tongue here will get you in so much trouble. Smallest member of the body, yet it's the most powerful. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things you have need of will be added unto you. That's my message. Where's your heart today? Where is your heart today? Is your heart to God? Is your desire, is your heart's desire truly 
to see others know about Christ, come to the understanding of who He is, that they too can have a relationship with Him? Or is it just about what people think? Well, I can tell them I go to church, but that doesn't mean I serve God. Because <coughs> you know what? Many a man has sat on the pew and never had a relationship with God. Amen. They've had religion. Many people say, I've got religion. Well, i got religion, don't got you saved. <laughs> I have a relationship. I have a relationship. That's why I'm saved. I have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's why I'm saved. Amen. It's not because I come through the, these doors and I sit in Gateway Tabernacle. That's not why. I'm not saved because I'm sitting in this church. I'm saved because I have a relationship with God. And I'm the one that feeds that relationship every day. And you can feed it spiritual food, or you can feed it, feed it natural food. You can say, I want to be the top rung of the ladder. I want to drive that Lamborghini. I want to do whatever. And if that's what is most important to you, you can have that. But at what expense? God is coming after people who have made themselves ready in an hour that you know not. He is coming, I guarantee you. Sure, if you put a pot of water on the stove and turn on the heat, when you first put it on there, does it start to boil? No. It takes time. But eventually, it's going to boil. This world is at a boil right now. This world is at a boiling point right now. And I don't know, sometimes I shake my head because of the things that you said. Lord, how much more? How much more? What else are we going to endure? And you know what? He just says, keep yourself. Keep yourself in this time. You keep yourself girded. You keep your mind on Christ. And it's going to be okay. Don't allow the things of the world to get you down because they're out there. And when those things happen, you pray for them. You pray for those people. You pray for the families of those people. When you think of the atrocities that the Syria, they just killed hundreds and hundreds of people with some type of chemical gas. And they don't even know what it was yet. Pray for those people. Pray that God would give them an understanding. You have to know God for yourself today. I thank you, man. I praise you. Oh, you are. Raise your hands. Loose change.
early this morning. Nobody getting older? No, younger. Is there a this morning? We got an anniversary of Mary? Anniversary? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, you got a wedding anniversary. I got a wedding anniversary. Oh, my God.
Sister Mindy, what did you guys do this morning? Mindy. 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 I told you. I have to end upside down. Uh, we just uh, discussed money today. And uh, how um, money can be an idol. And yes, how that relates to our world today. And, you know, kids and, and what they go after. You know, if they have expensive phones and Great riches, computers yeah. and clothes and, and stuff like that. And we talked about what the Bible says <clears> about it. And one of the things that we talked about at the end was Ananias and Sapphira and how they had uh, sold all they had and then decided to deceive God and keep a portion of the money. True. And they both died. You know, their punishment was death because they put the money before God. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Me and my brother, brother and I talked about that a little bit yesterday. Kids today and kids like 20, 30 years ago, what what is the wow. difference? Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't know how to act, would they? If they had to go outside and go to the outhouse like we did back in those days, or do do a pit and pump the pump for a drink of water, they they all thirst. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. <laughs> what the uh, sister Jennifer talked about this morning? Somebody. She. Last time she, it was, it's in the, it's in the area that last time she spoke was where your heart is, there also your treasure will be there. There it was, and Mike even spoke about that a little bit too, so I've touched on that. Um, today after Sunday school, choir, of course, um, you want to be in choir, just be ready to show up, be here, Terry. <laughs> you have a desire to sing or whatever to help out? Um, stick around in the church for choir. Yes, he absolutely can. We need all the help we can get, no matter what it is. You can step out to the Lord. Yes, Terry. Well, they got you, Terry. If you can sing, or you think you can sing. <laughs> do, yeah. They even try to get me to sing. That's what I'm about to do. Uh, you need to sing. <clears throat> you can sing. Um, the fellowship meeting, I guess, is canceled at Steinville Church due to... They are having an all day at Scallonsville Park. At the park? <coughs> yeah. yeah. Brother Kenny just had open heart surgery. I think you know Brother Kenny. He's a, he's a sweetheart. He's a good guy. Yes. <laughs> and the Lord for the the whole day to him. Trying to help him. Uh, yes. The benefit for Brother Kenny. Uh, Anderson. It's all day, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. Is there any other numbers I need to know? Or? Brother Chuck is getting Sister Lisa, I don't know if you've been in there. That's okay. Um, uh, we're going to speak uh, tonight, so they, I can't remember where it was. Look at the mic. I can't remember where it was. He's here. You'll ask him? Yeah, that's right. That's Chuck, where is it you're going? Tell everybody. 23rd of September, we'll be taking a load of clothes to the Memphis Mountain Mission in Hazard, Kentucky. Hazard. We'll take holy shoes any house of white. Yeah, that's a rough area. They have four different operations working out of that. They, they take care of four different operations down there. It's a big deal. And a lot of people are in need down there. And a lot of people are doing a lot of things down there, too. It's a big deal. Uh, we, we have a walk-on, yeah, I have a walk -on coming up in September 14th. That's more County Fairgrounds at 9 o'clock. We want you to take this serious. We need this to be done. And uh, most people, I, I can't tell you the money I've given to people for walking on to the Most years. of you know what it's for. It's not to you know who it was or what property it's for. Property taxes. We have the property tax on the place over here and, and the property tax here. We use that. We've done this for years. We use the walkathon money. We walk, have a walkathon once a year. It's at the fairgrounds, so you don't and you can walk 
walk at your own pace. If you cannot walk 10 miles, I suggest you cutting that down to five. But Sister Lisa said, Mom, we've always walked 10. So, but if you can't walk with five, that's fine. If you can't walk with a mile, that's fine. Sister Carolyn, one year, she walked three miles, I think it was. So whatever you can walk, if you can't walk, sponsor somebody or get sponsors. If you just feel like you cannot do it, get sponsors for somebody else. And this, like I said, this money, we use it for uh, property taxes. It says you're building. Hallelujah. You know, we, we really, I mean, God will bless you. Brother Mark and... And well, Brother Raymond's not here, but Brother Mark and some of them usually have a contest to see who's going to get the, the most sponsors. So uh, they, uh, they've done real good in the past. I think, how, what's the highest you ever got, Mark? I, I got up there pretty good. Raymond got up uh, better than 600 last year, I think, or something like that. Yep. So anyway, so, so most people will. I mean, if, if it's just a dollar a mile or whatever, or 50 cents a mile. Yep. But most people will sponsor you. And I haven't had anybody ask me here in church if they if I would like to sponsor I just automatically assume you sponsored me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, these are laying up here. So grab one. I, I know some people say, well, I can't. I've got things i got to do. But sure, when we start early, we usually start around 8 o'clock. So that's early so you can still get part of your walk in if you can only walk a mile. You know, walk, do something. You know, it's for the Lord. I mean, it may be for taxes, but it's still for the Lord. Yes. I may do six or seven. What? Miles? Miles? You're going to walk a little bit from back. 60 or 70 feet? He used to walk 11 miles. He used to walk 11 miles. He used to walk 11 miles. He walk 11 miles. He used to walk 11 miles. He used to walk 11 miles. Shane Green. Yeah, Shane Green. He used to walk 11 miles. We still take in backpacks except for children. You got money? Yeah. You know anybody needs a uh, kid needs to do that backpack? Right? And teddy bears also from Jaden. Teddy bears, there's a box pack there. Still taking teddy bears? With tags, yes. They go to Riley Hall. What else? I can't think of anything else, of course. Coffee house. Coffee house coming up at uh, 6. Sister Julie's speaking at Muncie yes. this afternoon, so I'm quite ready and Bobby had to leave her either going to Muncie with her. And she'll be here the 22nd to the 24th. Yes. Julie will. Uh -huh. <laughs> Attendance this morning was 52, and uh, tithes and offerings was $370. Yeah. Yeah. 
God. Can you hear this group? Now listen, listen. I can't oh, do the moo awesome. Can, <laughs> can you even hear this group over here? Uh, no. no. Wonder why you couldn't hear. Let me see. Can you hear me? <laughs> no, it don't work that way, does it? So, so listen. Tonight. We got a song for you, so come expect it. Kevin has a solo. Uh -oh. Regardeth not thee, O king, 
nor the decree that thou hast signed, that maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting, Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning, and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency, innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, I have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he had believed in his God. And I know that's a lot to read. That's a lot to read. And in all honesty, outside of children's Sunday school, we don't hear this account too awful much in church. We hear it alluded to. We hear it talked about. But we don't actually read it in church much. And I, I was asked Thursday night to, to speak this morning. I had nothing. Absolutely nothing. We got up yesterday morning, nothing. I just felt completely just hopeless, you know? All day yesterday, thoughts and things went through my head, went through my heart, nothing. Nothing was settling. Got up this morning, same thing. I'm going, oh, Lord, I'm in a bind here. You got to help. I had some rumblings on. I was like, no, I don't know. And, and God set this in my heart. What he set in my heart was trust. And I, I just kept thinking on that and dwelling on that. And one of the things I went and done, of course, what I like to do is go to find the definition of words. And trust in Merriam-Webster says, assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. It's a lot like people take trust and hope and kind of put them together. Trust and belief. You know, belief and trust, there's a lot of things that are similar. Um, what I know for me, hope is to expect with confidence. Trust is having confidence in someone else or something else. So, I got to thinking about that. And I'm like, how can I convey trust to people? And Daniel, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is one. But Daniel is a perfect example. One man by himself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not only had God, but they had each other. Okay? It's a lot easier to face the enemy when you got someone with you. Okay? But Daniel, on the other hand, Daniel was by himself. He was an Israelite in the midst of Medes and Persians. He had been in captivity, what, 40 some years by this point in time? Yeah, he came over there. He was, you know, brought over when he was a child. He had interpreted dreams for kings. You know, he was set in a high place, but he was still an Israelite. He served his God. He didn't serve the God of the Persians or the Medes or whoever else was in power at that point in time. He's been through three kings by this point. Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and now Darius. Okay? He was by himself for the most part. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been set up in power as well, but it doesn't mention them anywhere in these proceedings. 
So I picked Daniel out because Daniel had to have a trust in God. He had to have confidence in someone or something else. When Darius was tricked into signing this decree that couldn't be changed, even by him, it had to last the 30 days regardless. He didn't think about what, how that would affect different ones. He loved Daniel. Daniel was going to be set above all the presidents and princes. They didn't like that. So they tricked the king. So Daniel had to be put into the lion's den. If the king didn't do it, you know what would have happened to the king? He would have probably been thrown in the lion's den himself for not following the decree that he put in place. So he had to throw Daniel in the lion's den as much as he didn't want to. Daniel went in there by all accounts alone. It was him and the lions. He had to put his faith somewhere. He had to put his trust somewhere. And you know what? King Darius put his trust somewhere too. King Darius told him, he said, your God will deliver you. Yes, yes. And he fasted all night. <coughs> he didn't believe in Daniel's God before time, but he had seen the works Absolutely. that God had performed Woo! through yes. Daniel. Yeah. He had seen the plentifulness that had come forth, yeah. the abundance in the yeah. land. Yeah. He knew that there was something about this guy over here yeah. and the one that he trusted and whose faith he put his trust in that would do something. And he knew that he would deliver him. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. It's just like us today, you know, we fast and pray, and then when God does it, we just, we're amazed. You know, Darius was relieved and just amazed that, you know, then it was still alive. And that's the way we are today, you know. <coughs> we fast and pray over something, then when God does it, we're just, we're, we're in awe, we're amazed. <coughs> And that's where that's kind of where I'm going with this. We take we take so much for granted sometimes. We take and we say so many times we just it's lip service in a lot of ways. And don't get me wrong, you speak things as if they are, you speak things into existence. But so many times we said, I have my faith in God. I put my trust in God. I put my trust that He will supply my needs. And then when you don't have the money to buy the milk or the bread or to put the shoes on the feet, then you're worrying and you're wringing your hands when you've been saying all along, my faith is in God. It's kind of an oxymoron. It is. I want my husband and my daughter to come up here. <laughs> we had a conversation on the way to church before they really knew what I was doing. And the conversation was, I asked Tony, well, I asked Shayla, I said, do you trust your daddy? What's your answer? It depends. <laughs> it depends. <coughs> and I asked Tony, I said, do you trust yourself? Yeah. Well, what else was your answer? I don't know. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I said, I need you to do something for me. And I've gotten a response. This morning before church, they go, oh no. And we did it over there before we came over. And, and it worked. But the response was, it depends. The response was, I don't know if I trust myself. How often do we do that? I said, you know what? I said, you're playing right perfectly into what I got to say. Just with the conversation that we had in the car. And I want you to tell them what you told her in the car. Don't cry. I don't want to cry. Shayla's part of the conversation was, I'm bigger than he is. And this she is. But I point blank told her, I will hurt myself to keep my child safe. Yeah. So, look at me.
And you see, he even told her before time, I would hurt myself to keep you from getting hurt. Now stop and think about those words. I couldn't, it was such an amazing set of words that come out of his mouth when he didn't even know what I was talking about. Because those are the exact words, the exact things that Jesus did. He hurt himself. He took the stripes on his back. He took the nails in the palm of his hands and in his feet. The crown on his head. He took all that hurt to keep you from getting hurt. I said, it was amazing. The conversation that took place in the car on the way to church was exactly what Jesus had done for us. We have to put our trust in our God, in our Father. Shayla put her trust in her daddy. Even though she didn't want to, even though I made her, she had to have trust there in me to tell her to do it, as well as her dad to complete it. She had to have that trust in herself to be able to do that, to know that she wouldn't get hurt. On the flip side of that, he had to have trust in himself as well. You had to have trust. You had to have confidence in someone or something. We so often today put our confidence in the world, in people who are out here, in people who can't really do anything for us, in the money, just like we talked about in Sunday school, in the wealth, in the fame, the popularity. How many, how many celebrities have you seen that have went up and then they bought it down? Because where was their trust? It wasn't up there. It was in what they could get their hands on. And when that ran out, they bought it out. I've got a few scriptures that I just want to share with you. And I pretty much, I, I pretty much have said all that needs to be said. You know, what God gave me this morning. But there's a few scriptures in it, just a list of them. I don't expect anybody to turn to them, because I'm just going to run through them. But these are scriptures I looked up on the internet when I was studying this this morning. Looked up and trying to quickly find scriptures on trust. And Psalms 9.10 says, And they that know, my, know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Psalms 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices with song, will I praise him. Psalms 31, 14, But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Psalms 52, 8, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Psalms 56, 3, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And that was perfect to go along with what happened here. Shayla was afraid. She didn't want to do it, but she put her trust in her dad. How many times are we afraid to take that next step forward into what God has for us? And we hold ourselves back from doing what God wants us to do, or moving forward in His will, because we can't put our trust in Him. When you get afraid, you need to remember that song, that verse, what time I am afraid, I will trust in Thee. Psalms 56, 4, In God I will praise His word, in God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Proverbs 3, 5, 
Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Isaiah 12, 2, and this is one of my favorite sets of scriptures. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Isaiah 26, 4, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And lastly, 1 Timothy 4.10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Amen. Amen.